In this class, we will continue the transit time effect. Now, in the previous videos, we have discussed what is a transit time effect. Now, we know that the transit time effect has to be taken care when the length of the wire is comparable with the wavelength, right? So, we have already concluded this in the previous videos. Now, the question comes to us is, when we have studied the network analysis, we never considered about transit time effect, right? Now, why we are considering this thing when I am dealing with electromagnetics? Let us understand this by a simple. Let us say that in network analysis, what voltage and frequency we deal with? It is nothing but 230 volts and 50 hertz, right? So, in network, let us say this is some load. What will be the voltage? 220 volt or 230 volt and 50 hertz, right? This is what you deal with. But in AC analysis, what frequency we deal with? It is in the order of gigahertz, right? So, it will be nothing but same circuit. If I draw for high frequency, it will be something, let us say that some 5 volt, it can be anything, right? Voltage can be anything. And 1 gigahertz, this will be generally the more focus is on frequency. When we deal with a high frequency circuit, the frequency would be very, very high, 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, right? When we deal with the small network circuits, as we have already seen in the network classes, it would be nothing but some 50 hertz. Let us understand this, why we are so bothered about the frequencies here. When my frequency is 50 hertz, what would be my time period? 1 by 50, right? This comes out to be 0 0.02 seconds, right? When my frequency is 1 gigahertz, what would be my time period? Again 1 by f, right? This comes out to be 1 by 1 into 10 to the power 9. This comes out to be 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. It means one cycle in this case is completed in 0 0.02 seconds, right? So, let me draw a sinusoidal voltage. Let me draw a sinusoidal voltage here, right? Now, the one cycle is completed in 0 0.02 seconds. The one cycle is completed in 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. Now, can I say that this signal is changing very slowly, right? It is 0 0.02 seconds, right? This signal is 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. It means it is changing very fast, right? We know that, right? This is very high number. It means one cycle is completed in 10 to the power minus 9 second itself, but this one cycle is completed in 0.2 seconds, right? So, can I say that this is slow changing? This is slow changing. And this is, this is fast changing. Right? Now, when the signal is changing very slow and I want to transmit from any point, let us say again we will take the same point A dash to BB dash. I want to transmit over this, let us say that again the length is L. It is applicable here also. A dash to another point BB dash and the length is L. Now, as this signal which is small frequency is changing very slowly. If I move some length, if I move from some length, the change is very slow, these points will be also very nearby, right? Because this is in order to in order to move for a length, it will take some time, right? But time, you can see that these voltages are will be very nearby because this is slow changing. Now, in this case, where the signal is changing very, very fast, what will happen is, if you move a small length also, the voltage would have changed very significantly, right? Though there will be a significant amount of potential difference. But in this case, you can see that these points are very close together, right? So, if it is close together, I can say the potential difference is hardly zero, right? There might be something, but which will be very, very small, right? So, 
if there is a potential difference you know that the transit time come into picture right so that's the reason that when you're dealing with the high frequency circuit the transit time effect will come into a picture but when we're dealing with a normal network circuit which is at low frequency you will not even care about the transit time effect right so the important thing to note here is the transit time effect will come into picture when we're dealing with the high frequency circuits and also we know that if you want to neglect the transit time effect right what you need to do that the length of the wire should not be comparable with the the wavelength of the signal right we'll see more on this in the next videos